from the very first time all the way to today, it's been several years, every time I cross that, that wall, every time I cross the sign, I see the exact same thing. I see traffic jams, I see children going to school, which is probably the most common sight in Palestinian areas, the children coming and going to school. I see people going to work, I see shops. I've yet to see the Palestinians that want to kill me. I've yet to see the Palestinians ready with machine guns and tanks and F-16s ready to bomb me because I'm an Israeli. I'm yet to, I've yet to see that. And I know that many other Israelis who do this haven't seen it either. And with time, I began to realize this sign has nothing to do with security. The wall has nothing to do with security. The massive armed Israeli forces along the road have nothing to do with security. The terrorizing and harassment that Palestinian Israelis go through when they go through Tel Aviv airport, the humiliating process that they have to go through, they have to endure every time they decide to leave and go overseas, has nothing to do with security. It has everything to do with racism, with hatred, and with a deep desire to keep us apart, to keep me privileged and them with no rights. That's the name of the game. That's what it's all about. Now in this picture I stand with my friend Jamal who sat in Israeli prison for many many years. In fact he was given a life sentence but he was exchanged with, in one of the prisoner exchanges between Israel and the PLO. And the reason he was given a life sentence is because he killed a soldier. He and three others there we are, saw two young Israeli soldiers guarding a bank in Ramallah of all things. And soldiers are usually fully armed of course and they approached them and they stabbed them to death with a knife. And for that they were later on, you know, beaten, tortured and arrested and given life sentences. But when I see the picture of the two of us standing side by side, I have to wonder which one of us is really the terrorist? Because according to this, it's certainly not him. I, on the other hand, served in the Israeli army, an army of occupation, an army of oppression, an army whose sole purpose is to make sure that he does not have a state, he does not have rights, and he dare not resist. So yes, my army has uniforms and commanders and generals, but which one of us is really the terrorist? I'll give you one example. Almost exactly four years ago, as Israel began its attack on Gaza, September the 27th, 2008, at 11.25 in the morning. What I refer to as the most shameful day in the Jewish history. The most shameful day in the history of the Jewish people. Israel began carpet bombing Gaza and on the first day of a, what was to be a 21 day attack, they dropped 100 tons of bombs. Okay, a one ton bomb will decimate an entire city block. Gaza is one of the most densely populated places in the world. 800,000 children live in Gaza. 11.25 is exactly the time when the morning school shift and the afternoon school shift change. So all the kids are in the streets. All the children are on the streets. That was the moment decided by the decision makers in Israel to begin the attack. This was the first day of a 21 day slaughter that had absolutely no justification. If that's not terrorism, I don't know what is.